Today, I'm pleased to announce that Adobe has launched the 2017 edition of Adobe Captivate. I've prepared a series of videos on my YouTube channel to give you an introduction as to what's new. In this video, I'll show you a new way to prepare responsive design projects using a feature called Fluid Boxes. And we'll also see a new feature that will assist your end users with reading text content on mobile devices. Let's get started. So here you can see the pretty familiar interface of Adobe Captivate. It's not all that different from Adobe Captivate 9, uh, or for that matter, Adobe Captivate 8. But one thing that jumped out to me first when I saw this interface was that there were no breakpoints available across the top. Instead, what you have is a series of preview options available. So if you wanted to preview your project uh, on a iPhone 6 or an iPhone 7 or an iPad or what have you, you can choose those from the drop down menu. Alternatively, you can enter in your own preview width and preview height, and you can also select the slider over here, the preview slider, to adjust the size that you wish. Now, once you've made an adjustment to the default, you'll see a tiny little plus icon here. And if you click on that, this will give you the opportunity to create your own custom preview. And that will save and make it available uh, in your drop down box here. So if you have a particular device uh, that your organization uses that isn't on here, and you want a preview of what that will look like, you can add that to your preview drop down here. But let's go back to desktop view for now. And I'm going to show you this new feature called fluid boxes. Now, with responsive design courses, you'll see this icon here, and this will allow you to choose one of two different fluid box arrangements. There's the horizontal choice, and there's the vertical choice as well. You'll get a, a similar type experience on either, but you'll choose these based on the design that you're trying to achieve. In this particular instance, I'm going to choose a vertical fluid box design, and I'm going to click on that now, and you'll see this uh, additional item show up where you can select the number of fluid boxes you would like to have on your slide, and you can choose as many as you wish here. Now, I'm going to choose, in this case, three, because I've sort of got a plan in mind uh, as to how my content is going to be laid out for this particular slide. Keep in mind, though, different slides can have different configurations. And, of course, Adobe Captivate 2017 comes with a series of pre-built themes that include a variety of different fluid box uh, configurations. So let me stick with three for right now, and I'll show you what, what happens. So I like to think of fluid boxes as having uh, parent and child properties. So your, your parent property, uh, of course, and can be selected from the fluid box selector here, is essentially the whole slide. So what settings do you want to make for the whole slide? And you have a series of choices that you can make. If you've rethought your decision to make this a, um, a, a vertical choice, you could change that now to horizontal and back. So that's something that you can further customize here. Also, you can choose how items get wrapped within the fluid boxes. So in this case here, the default selection is wrapped to next column. So once you've filled up from left to right all the items that would normally fit here, it will force those items onto a next line. Um, usually this is a good choice, but there may be occasions where you might want to squeeze all of your objects that will reside within the fluid box into a single column. You may also want those items to appear on top of one another, and you may also want to choose a symmetrical approach where they're always arranged in as symmetrical a way as possible. And of course, you can determine what that wrap point is. In this case here, it's set at 80%. You also can choose the alignment. Center is probably a good choice, but you may want to left align all your content or right align all your content within a fluid box as well. 
Uh, stretch to fit is a good choice, uh, but you don't have to choose that. I like the idea that when I add an object to a fluid box, it fills that space up and only reduces in size if I add additional objects as well. And the same can be done for uh, vertical as well. It will stretch to fit and I can choose those different choices there to align at the top, middle align, bottom, or I can actually build a little space in, in between and around those objects. Within fluid boxes, you also have padding available. So I can set a number of pixels to ensure that I have white space around all the objects that I'm going to place. If you're a little confused, hang on. There's going to be a further explanation as I build this particular slide, and I think it will become clear. So if I want to start adding content to the slide, probably the best way to do that is to select the fluid box in which that, that content is going to reside. So let's first of all go with... Uh, the top section. That'll be a, a title space that I'll use. And I'm going to select that item. In fact, before I do so, let me go here and just adjust the sizes a little bit because the title doesn't need to be as large as the other areas. And I'm going to reserve this space down at the bottom for my navigation controls. Okay, so let's get started here. I'm going to select the top fluid box and now I can start inserting content. So all I want in this particular fluid box is a placeholder for my title. So I'm going to use a text caption for that in this case here. And let's call this, uh, this is going to be about Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. So I'm just going to type in his name at the top here. And I think I'll bump up that font to about 40 points. And we're going to just make the usual selections with style and and alignment and so on. And I'm happy with that. That looks fine. Now let's add uh, an image of Justin Trudeau so that users can, uh, can know what the guy looks like. We'll go to image. I've saved a copy of his official Canadian portrait here. And now I didn't have a fluid box selected. So this has just come in at full size here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this item by itself and then drag it till one of the fluid boxes is selected. As you can see, the middle one is now selected here. And when I release that, it will now force that object into that uh, middle fluid box there. And that's fine. That's what I had in mind. And of course, uh, in this case here, I want to maintain aspect ratio. That's really important for things like images or uh, graphics and so on. Now, with the middle box selected, I'm also going to add some, some uh, text on this screen. So I'm going to use a text caption again. And that's going to create the text caption and space it out accordingly. And as you can see, there's it's really tight with the image here. Uh, so let's select our middle fluid box and just add some padding within this. So this is a child level change that we're making to this fluid box here. I'm just going to add five pixels around all these objects here. And now I'm going to paste this text into that text box. And again, I'll make the usual refinements to have that text box align the way I want it and so on. Now, right off the bat, the one problem I see is that I've got more text here than I've got space for on my slide. Don't worry about that for now. I'm going to show you another feature in this video that's going to help with this exact problem. So now let's go to the bottom fluid box where I'm going to add my navigation controls. So I'm going to use some shapes used as buttons. So again, I've got this selected here. I'm going to insert, uh, let's go with a rounded rectangle here. And that's going to we'll place that right there. Now it's going up to the full width, but it's maintaining the aspect ratio. And I actually don't want to do that. I'm going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio. And as you can see, it fills the entire fluid box. Let's give it a caption so people know what this giant button's going to do. And of course, I need to check off uses button. 
So now I have this next button at the bottom here, but I'd like to also have, of course, a go to previous slide button as well. Um, since I'm here, I'll just go hand, hand cursor and disable click sound because I'm not a fan of the click sound. I'm going to select this next button and on my keyboard, I'm going to hit control D, which will duplicate this button, make a second copy of it within that fluid box. And what's great about that is that it automatically resizes both buttons so that they are appropriate in size and fill the space as well. So we'll make this one a back button and I'll choose go to previous slide for that functionality. So I have a back, I have a next. Now, of course I could choose because I've got a back and next, maybe I don't need the, the, uh, play bar so I can actually uncheck that and have this use up the full uh, full screen width here which is fine or full uh, height and so I've got my back I've got my next a little tight together though let's actually make that a bit of a difference here so I'm going to add some padding to this as well you know what I'm going to go a little higher I'm going to go 10 pixels and 10 pixels and that'll keep the buttons not ridiculously large like they were so we have pretty much everything that we want for this particular slide. But remember, there was one more feature I wanted to bring your attention to that's really going to help your projects that have a lot of text on screen, especially when they're being published for mobile devices or tablets. So again, as, as we saw here, if I was to resize this content, because there's so much here, I would have to go to such a ridiculously small font that it would be impossible even to read. So that's not going to work. Let me keep it up at 20 uh, points there. And uh, let's demonstrate that feature for you. So I'm going to do a preview um, in an HTML5 browser. So here's our slide. Everything looks great. And again, the, uh, the font uh, size is, uh, is going to adjust itself appropriately. Uh, but unfortunately, it's still just not large enough to have all the content display on the screen. And this is true of even desktop mode. So one of the features that's been added to Captivate 2017 is the ability to include these expand text icons on any text that's being cut off. So this is great for mobile users. If I'm on, let's say, a smartphone, I don't want to miss out on this fantastic content about Justin Trudeau. So what users will be able to do is they'll be able to click this icon and it will give them a semi-transparent text box that not only displays things at a larger font size, but gives them the ability to scroll the content as well. So now, responsive design projects can truly be accessible by all people with all devices. When they're ready to return to the rest of the project, they just need to click somewhere on their screen. And then of course they can choose the back or next button and continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.